Hello, this is the second part of Hei Hinhashi video. Video is a little bit long, so do the content. Here I'll be sharing you the knowledge of an ebook I've written, Scalping is Fun, written by Hei Hinhashi Trader. It is sold on Amazon Kindle for $1. The feedback there will make some complain these are common knowledge which could be learned from videos online, and some praise for the knowledge they've gained. So, the ebook are divided into four parts. Part one was the basics of Hei Hinashi. Part two was Hei Hinashi strategy examples. Part three was about his journal of lecturing his student on a one-on-one -on -one course. Part four was his rules about when to and when not to enter the market, and his philosophy of trading. This ebook contains a total of twenty thousand words with lots of trading examples. It's very cheap though; it's one dollar. And actually, the author has an active YouTube channel, but mostly he mostly shares his live trading and tutorial. Make sure to check out his channel. If you haven't learned about the basics of Hakin Hashi chart, you should learn it first before continue. I will leave a link down in the description box. Disclaimer: I'm not giving any financial advice, nor I'm licensed to do so. Just take it as an education. Of course, you can bring out a lot of good examples. Trading life may be another story then. So let's be more practical. On this video, I'll be speaking on my own language level, but his narrative, his perspective of view. Man, when I read this ebook, it talks only good examples. Trade with joy. His trading philosophy. No wonder they end up getting no joy from trading, and no wonder they end up losing money by hacking touch it trader. It's wrong by the fact that money has store of value while currency does not. Haha. <laughs> now one question I have to ask before proceeding further: Do you know what is scalping? Taking advantage of the fast moving market and to grab as much pip as possible in a short period of time? That's scalping. Another question to you: If you used to scalp, do you scalp on active hours or non-active hours? Here, I want you to trade only on active hours, where trend momentum are more sustainable. If you look at this statistics, I'll put the link down in the description. Make sure to check it out. If you look at this statistics, you will get to know that not all trading hours are equals, and not all trading days are equals in terms of pip movement per days. Some has higher, while some has lower. When you trade on the quiet market, say bank holidays, you will see situation like these. And this on active hour period, so you won't be staring in front of a device for long, right? You would get demotivated and lose temper very soon, right? While scalping can be very profitable, I don't really encourage doing it as a beginner because the spread is likely to kill your account in the long run because of the tight stop loss, which is like five to ten pips. While the spread is generally one to two pips, considering if you are trading Euro USD, it's like you are paying ten to forty percent commission each trade, which is much worse than playing Russian roulette. I assume beginners are very likely to be discouraged very soon, like very very soon. Anyway, let's start. It seems the intro was a little long, too long. At the beginning of his writing, he goes, "If the price reaches a previous demand or awful level, there's a good chance it will turn." Trading is nothing more than the ability to make profit off of the imbalance of a market, a constant exploration of where demand or surplus for the market exists. A trader is always looking for a turning point in the market where he may find an imbalance to exploit. I'm not sure about you, but the meaning I've interpreted was trade on the supply and demand level where possible bounce rule, or known as counter trend trading. You will see lots of example given on his rule. When you talk about supply and demand on the fundamental analysis, say currencies, that's based on economy growth factors, which is a vast topic that requires to fit large sums of data like country policy, government stability, monetary policies, their culture, employment rate, retail sales, blah blah blah. If you're obsessed of digesting that much of information, you should trade stock and see. On technical analysis. Supply and demand are sometimes interpreted as support and resistance, which they bring similarity. Supply and demand are based on the broader zone, while support and resistance are most often on specific price level. But you seldom hear people saying supply and demand, right? Only if you want to be very, very specific. The first strategy example he used was supply and demand. He didn't learn the supply and demand on the ebook. We will create examples ourselves anyway, and I hope you guys can pause this video and practice yourself after this instead of just listening to me. This site is tradingview.com. I will leave a link on the description box. 
A 30 second chart which the author frequently used for scalping but he doesn't recommend beginner to use. So what can you tell on this picture? If I want you to draw the supply and demand boxes, can you do it? Notice that the momentum started here, we consider this as a supply zone. Here also. And a strong bounce here, this should be a demand zone. And a bounce occurs near the demand zone, we extend the box. Strong bounce, uh, this is a supply zone. And a strong bounce on the supply zone, we extend the box again. So, see now we see the first rate here and a long rate body. Should you consider shorting here with the fact that this is the supply zone? What do you think? That's the supply and demand on Heikin Hachi. You can literally backtest it yourself on the chart and exit trade when the momentum started to lose or the candle's color changes according to him. The second strategy example he used was color trend or trend reversal on a doji and or spinning top candle. To put it bluntly, doji and spinning tops are maybe a courtesy message. Doji signals a balance between buyers and sellers and often heralds a trend change. Spinning top is the first indication that the current trend will weaken. When do I get in? If either a doji or a spinning top arises, this is an indication to me that the current momentum is at least temporarily over. It could be a respite within the trend or beginning of corrections which as counter trend scalper, I'm obviously interested in. The point is, you will never find things out in advance with 100% security. You will never know if it's a short break or whether the market is preparing to correct. Trading and scalping is a probability game. What's important is that your wins are bigger than your losses. To me, I don't recommend trading with doji or spinning tops because these candlestick patterns appear far more common on smaller than on larger time frame and may result in mixed signal. Um, don't take my words until you test it yourself. I've skipped some of his strategy which kind of lag, where there are no clear tools to use to support his work. The next strategy is Heikin Hachi with technical analysis, support and resistance line. Here's a good. A good example reflecting his work. Code. The next two candles are significantly smaller, indicating a loss of momentum. Although the price is touching the support line, it does not fall under the line. Then the next candle is a doji, pointing to a balance between buyers and sellers. Here's Heikin Hashi scalper must white Jill Lanley track the cross. Because at the next candle, the color changes from red to green. The buy signal is here, you should buy, because we see that the price already started to rise by the next candle to indicate that the buyers are coming into actions. So try it out yourself. The fourth strategy we're going to talk about is swing high and swing low of the previous day. Now when he said day, he meant days as he continue reading his book. This you might need to use a larger time frame to spot the swinging candle. Upon starting a chat, I can barely find any swing high or low spot. Um, next. The fifth strategy is the importance of round number in Forex. Now, it's true sometimes round number are served as a psychological level where it may act as support or resistance. If you have watched movies regarding Wall Street or some alligator battling with other alligators, you may have seen scenes like, we have to keep the price above 8,000 before the market close. Defend that price. Yes, no. Something like that. Well, round numbers works very well, but not always. Take a look at this one minute chart. Notice that the round number for Euro USD is 1.14 here. Can you notice that? Originally, it was a resistant level. As soon as it's broken, it acts as a support level. And the candle bounce as if 1.14 are now acts as resistant. When you're seeing a continuous of red candles, you may want to shot it here. Here, the 1.13 round number, what can you notice? You would only want to sell when there is a momentum. 
The sixth strategy is, which I think is pretty awesome, is about where the market decided to go. This was part of the round number strategy, but feels like a candlestick pattern to me. Here we will be implementing a candlestick pattern where dojis and spinning top align in like more than five in a row. Did you saw that on this chart? Here are where a numbers of dojis and spinning top group together. And when it happened that they got up from the box, this is what it looks like. And another examples. You get the idea? Practice it yourself. And exit signal. Exiting a trade will be quite challenging like spotting an entry signal. The other didn't really cover much on exit signal. He had two ways. One is when candles color started to change. And another is when trend momentum is losing. My personal opinion is that at least your take profit must be greater than your stop loss to achieve a positive profit factors, a balance of risk and reward ratio. And that's it. And a couple of important notes from Heikin Hashi trade that I've highlighted. Code. More dangerous is counter trend scalping on trending day. In the evening, it's always easy to determine if the market you were trading just had a trending day. Statistics shows that market goes sideways more than 70% of the time. Most of the time, the market goes sideways. In this situation, it is completely safe to buy the support. The swing low of the previous day, the round number, and to sell the resistance, the swing high of the previous day, the round number. Usually, we have one to two trending days per week. They are not always easy to identify, but there are some clues. If the two or three previous trading days were typical range days, sideways markets, then the likelihood that today will be a trending days is increased. Another indication is if the market first goes in the other directions. Trend days often occur when major economy data or major press conference of the central bank are awaited. As a scalper, always have to look at the big picture. If you don't know whether Euro is market on the daily chart or 4 hour chart in an uptrend, a downtrend or a sideways trend, you do not actually know what you are doing. Study trends, study the economic calendar. You should try to approach the market from the long side in bull markets and from the short side in bear markets. You simply have better probabilities on your side instead of against you. Should you not short at all in bull markets? And finally, conclusions. Always practice yourself. Don't get fascinated by all the fancy figures and examples I've shown here. Good luck and goodbye. And please, if you can, like, share, and comment.